Hi, my name is Eric Pesinelli, and I'm the Editorial Art Manager for the APS Publications Program. This presentation deals with a recent addition to the Society's ethical policies and deals with figure manipulation. Is this new? The ability to manipulate photographs has been around nearly as long as photography itself. Here's an early example from the Soviet Union. One day you were in favor with Lenin, but heaven forbid you step out of line. It probably took more effort to remove you from public records than it did from public life, but you were removed nonetheless. The ability to manipulate images in programs such as Photoshop has been around for many years, but in the past, paper workflows made it difficult to discover unethical figure manipulation. Now, digital workflows make the electronic files available to investigators who can reveal manipulations once hidden in paper manuscripts. So how can unethical figure manipulation be prevented? Well, first, societies and publishers need to define a policy, and then they need to educate their members and authors on the policy. After the stem cell paper scandal broke, many publishers scrambled to set a policy regarding figure manipulation. Most STM publishers have adopted similar policies regarding the ethical manipulation of figures. Once policy was established, the information was passed on in the form of published editorials and additions to the Information for Authors sections of their websites. So what is unacceptable figure manipulation? Many publishers are adopting similar guidelines to define what constitutes unacceptable figure manipulation. And these guidelines seem to break down into three different categories. Improper editing, improper grouping, and improper adjustment. Improper editing. This states that authors should not move, remove, introduce, obscure, or enhance any specific feature within an image. Images should appear as they were captured in the lab. Now, manipulations that fall into this category many times are merely misunderstandings of what is acceptable. An author may be simply cleaning up their image, removing dirt or other extraneous matter that may detract from the image quality or distract the reader. This actually may deprive the reader from seeing other information that is often hidden in primary data. And why is it wrong to touch up images? Because if you misrepresent your data, you are deceiving your colleagues. Here's an example of improper editing. Here, originally captured data is being obscured by blocks of like-colored image cut and pasted from other areas. Was the information hidden important? Maybe, or maybe not. Was the intention to deceive or to provide a pretty picture? Either way, this type of manipulation is unacceptable. Here's a similar situation. This author did this cleanup for aesthetic reasons. He thought he was providing a more attractive image and did so to improve the quality of his paper, not to deceive. Another category of manipulation is improper grouping. The reader assumes that a single micrograph presented in a figure represents a single microscopic field. Combining images from separate microscope fields into a single micrograph constitutes a misrepresentation of your original data. If you are combining or rearranging images from different gels, fields, or exposures, dividing lines must be used and a disclosure of the arrangement must be added to the legend. Here's an example of improper grouping. This author brought together images from the same capture that were too far apart for a good layout. This can be done, but the composition needs to have dividing lines, similar to the boxes that I put in, to show that the composition did not occur naturally or is not as captured. As you can see, some compositions become quite elaborate. This example touches on both improper editing and improper grouping. In this case, the author introduced two bands into a gel that did not exist in the original capture. Either there needed to be dividing lines and an explanation, or better yet, there needed to be an addition of two full gel lanes with dividing lines and an explanation. Finally, there's improper adjustment. Authors should not adjust the contrast, color balance, or brightness unless applied to the entire figure, and the adjustment does not obscure, eliminate, or misrepresent the originally captured information. All adjustments should be disclosed in the figure legend. Here's an example of improper adjustment. Here, contrast adjustments were made only to specific areas of the image, misrepresenting the actual captured photographic data. Such adjustments need to be made to the entire image. Here's an example of selective adjustment. One band has been lightened and another has been darkened to alter the results. Here's an example of just how far an adjustment tool can be pushed and how it can affect the captured data. 
In this case, the contrast and brightness levels of this gel have been pushed to the extreme, which has eliminated the weaker bands and information. Even something as simple as cleaning up your background can be considered figure manipulation since you are deleting captured data. Any question of improper manipulation raised during the review or editing process will be brought to the journal editor and to the chair of the publications committee for review. If called into question, authors should be prepared to provide original data and captures. It is important to keep your original digital or analog data exactly as they were acquired and to record your instrument settings. This good scientific practice will allow others to return to your original data and see whether any information was lost by the adjustment made to the image. Finally, STM authors should understand what is acceptable and unacceptable when it comes to the handling of images for scientific publication and pass that information on to those in their labs and classrooms. In principle, the ethics of presenting true data should be part of scientific training. Thank you for listening.